Hello friends Kalyani Educational Rhythms welcomes you to one more session of learning The subject today is grammar Learn and enjoy yourselves also When we hear the very word grammar we shudder and groan Most of us seem to find it so dull but i promise you after you have gone through this cassette you will agree with me that grammar can be fun somebody has said that english is a very funny language where put is put and but is but but it is a fun language too the more you learn and appreciate it the more you will enjoy it so let's start at the very beginning and get to the basics that is grammar or what makes the english language the dictionary meaning of grammar is the art and science dealing with a language's inflections and the established rules for using them as you know when we speak or write we use words and a group of words which makes complete sense is called a sentence for example little miss muffet sat on a tuffet sentences also are of four kinds they are declarative or assertive sentences interrogative sentences imperative sentences and exclamatory sentences a declarative or assertive sentence makes a statement example i am going out an interrogative sentence asks questions example what are you doing an imperative sentence expresses commands or requests example please get out or can i have your attention please and an exclamatory sentence expresses strong feelings example the heat is unbearable every sentence has two parts a subject and a predicate the subject is that part which names the person place or thing we are speaking about a predicate is that part which says something about the subject usually in a sentence the subject comes first sometimes to make an emphatic point the predicate comes before the subject i will now cite some examples of subject and predicate the sun rises in the east the sun is the subject and rises in the east is the predicate another example happy is the contented man here the contented man is the subject and happy is is the predicate Here is one more example. Every cloud has a silver lining. Every cloud is the subject and has a silver lining is the predicate. Long live the king. Here the king is subject and long live is the predicate. We will now learn some more about the declarative or assertive sentences. They could either be affirmative or yes statements or they could be negative or no statements for example she is a good girl is an affirmative sentence and she is not a good girl is a negative sentence even in the interrogative kind of sentences there are two kinds one is interrogative sentences beginning with interrogative words such as who why where how what etc example what are you doing there or how are you feeling today the other kind is the negative interrogative sentences example instead of saying you have hurt me you will say have you not hurt me or she is a good singer will be is she not a good singer the last but not the least form of a sentence is a question tag a question tag confirms the statement that precedes it or a positive statement requires a question tag at the end of it for example your brother has done well in his exams hasn't he or my mother cooks well 
doesn't she? Then there are also a group of words that make sense but not complete sense. These are called phrases. For example, in the sentence, the sun sets in the east, the group of words in the east is called a phrase. Or in the sentence, teach me how to do it, how to do it is the phrase. There also are another group of words which form part of a sentence and contain a subject and a predicate. Such a group of words is called a clause. For example, in the sentence, I think you are right. You are right is a clause. And in the sentence, those who want to play the game, raise your hands. The words, who want to play the game, will be a clause. So now you know quite a bit of what makes a sentence and what kinds of sentences there are. We then move on to parts of speech. Words are divided into different classes or kinds according to their use or the role they have to play in a sentence. The parts of speech are totally eight in number. We will first name them and then go into details about each one of them. They are noun, adjective, pronoun, verb, adverb, preposition, conjunction and interjection. Now let us define each one of them. A noun is a word used as the name of a person, place or thing. The word thing implies all objects which we can see, hear, smell, taste and touch. It also includes something which we can think of but which we cannot perceive through the five senses. Let us cite some examples. Ashoka was a great king. Here Ashoka and king are nouns. The flower is red. Here flower is a noun. His bravery won him the medal. Here bravery is the noun. It cannot be perceived through our senses, but we can think of it. An adjective is a word which is used to add something more to the meaning of a noun. For example, she is a clever girl. In this sentence, clever is the adjective. Or, there are 12 players in this game. The words 12 and this are the adjectives. A pronoun is a word used instead of a noun. For example, Amit is limping because he had a fall. Here he is the pronoun. Let us take another example. The books are where they ought to be. Here the pronoun is the word they. A verb is a doing word or an action word which is used to say something about a noun that is a person, place or thing. For example, the brother and sister cycled to school every day. In this sentence, the word cycled is a verb. Gold and diamonds are expensive. Here, the word are is a verb. An adverb is a word which adds something more to the meaning of a verb, an adjective or another adverb. For example, he ate his food quickly. In this sentence, the word quickly is the adverb because it is something more about the verb ate. Here is another example. This dress is very pretty. In this, the word very is the adverb since it adds something more to the adjective pretty. A preposition is a word used with a noun or a pronoun to show how the person or thing denoted by the noun or pronoun stands in relation to something else. For example, the eagle flew over my head. In this sentence, the word over is a preposition. Here's one more. The car was parked in the driveway. The preposition will be in because it connects the noun car in relation to the word parked. A conjunction is a word that is used to join either words or sentences. For example, Sita and Gita are sisters. 
The word and is a conjunction. I ate well but am still feeling hungry. Here the conjunction is but because it joins two sentences. And lastly, interjection. This is a word which expresses some sudden feeling. Example, oh no, I have lost my purse. Oh no, with an exclamation is the interjection. Or, hurrah, it has started raining. The interjection is hurrah. Now, you know the different parts of speech. Listen to this part of the cassette over and over again till you have it firmly in your head. You must also know that the same word can be used as different parts of speech. This is because the words are divided into different classes according to the work they do in the sentences. To cite three examples, he arrived a little after. Here the word after is an adverb. He arrived after them. Here the word after is a preposition. And he arrived after we had slept. The word after is a conjunction. You now have a fair outline of the eight different parts of speech. We will further tell you in detail about each one of them. We had told you that a noun is a word used as the name of a person, place or thing. That word which names a person or place is called a proper noun. And that word which means a thing is a common noun. For example, Sonali is a proper noun and girl is a common noun. Bombay is a proper noun whereas city is a common noun. Therefore, a proper noun is the name of some particular person or place and a common noun is a name given in common to every person or thing of the same class or kind. Common nouns also include collective nouns and abstract nouns. A collective noun is the name of a number of persons or things taken together and spoken of as one whole. For example, group, army, family, parliament or committee. Let's listen to some examples in sentences. The jury found the prisoner guilty or the flock of sheep are grazing. Abstract nouns are the name of a quality or action or state considered apart from the object it belongs. Under quality will come words such as hardness, softness, goodness, bravery, honesty. Under action are words such as laughter, movement, love, theft. And under state are words such as sickness, slavery, childhood, death, etc. The names of arts and sciences such as history, music, mathematics, grammar, chemistry are also abstract nouns. The word abstract means drawn off. Abstract nouns are formed from adjectives. Example, bravery from brave or redness from red. They are formed from verbs. For example, disobedience from disobey or growth from grow. They are also formed from common nouns such as sickness from sick or poverty from poor. Now rewind the cassette. Listen once more about the different kinds of nouns. Nouns also have a gender. There are four genders namely masculine, feminine, common and neuter gender. A noun that denotes a male animal is called a masculine gender such as boy, dog, bull. The noun that denotes a female animal is a feminine gender. Example, sister, hen, duck. That noun which denotes either male or female is common gender. Example, servant, friend, student, etc. 
a noun which denotes neither male or female or that thing which has no life is called a neuter gender for example pencil room tree table etc you must also know that some objects which have no life are personified which means that they are spoken of as living beings they are then regarded as male or female example sun winter time etc is masculine gender objects of beauty and grace are referred to as being feminine gender such as moon earth liberty etc therefore we say the sun sends his rays over the whole valley and we will say peace has proved her victory over hatred let us now randomly say both masculine and feminine genders brother sister instructor instructors shepherd shepherdess horse mare son daughter colt filly lion lioness king queen sir madam seamster seamstress and so on children do you know the meaning of the word seamster it means a tailor and the spelling do you know it it is s e a m s t e r seamster now after learning about the four genders of a noun we move on to the next stage and that is singular and plural noun that noun which denotes one person or thing is a singular noun a noun that denotes more than one person or thing is a plural noun thus cow dog pen tree are singular nouns that means they are in a singular number and cows dogs pens and trees are plural number nouns then we have the compound noun which forms its plural by adding an s to the principal word so commander in chief will become commanders in chief and passer by will be passers by and son in law will be sons in law some nouns have different meaning in the singular and plural for example good will mean well being and goods will mean merchandise force would mean strength but forces would mean troops and lastly material nouns are those nouns which are the names of substances or materials and which are not used in plural for example gold iron wood steel etc with that we come to an end about all we have to know about nouns revise again by listening to the tape once more and don't forget to work out some exercises from your grammar book on this chapter the more you practice the more you will become perfect children i hope you are enjoying yourselves learning grammar it's not boring is it keep listening to this cassette over and over again and i promise you you really will be good in english and then you can write off letters essays letters to the editor or a newspaper and perhaps you could write a script also so let's carry on with the cassette on side 2 Of speech is the adjective 
adjective means added to it is a word used with a noun to add something for its meaning to explain in easier words an adjective is a word used with a noun to describe or point out the person animal place or thing which the noun names or to tell the number or quantity there are five kinds of adjectives adjectives of quality or descriptive adjectives adjectives of quantity adjectives of number or numeral adjectives which are further divided into three parts that is definite numeral adjectives indefinite numeral adjectives and distributive numeral adjectives then you have the demonstrative adjectives and interrogative adjectives listen to this part of the cassette once more and learn it now let us learn in detail about them an adjective of quality or descriptive adjective shows the quality or kind of a person or thing example bombay is a huge city or the foolish donkey tried to sing here is some interesting information adjectives formed from proper nouns are called proper adjectives example french wines indian tea or assam tea or turkish tobacco these proper adjectives are classified under adjectives of quality adjectives of quantity they show how much of a thing is meant or they answer the question how much for example she did not eat any food or there has not been enough rain this year or he lost all his goods in the fire so the words any enough and all are adjectives of quantity then is the adjectives of number or numeral adjectives which show how many persons or things are meant or in what order a person or thing stands to cite an example six students were absent today or most girls like playing with dolls or saturday is the last day of the week the words six most and last are adjectives of number or numeral adjectives you must also know that numeral adjectives are divided into three parts first is definite numeral adjective which denotes an exact number 3 4 5 etc are called cardinal numbers and third fourth fifth are called ordinal numbers second is indefinite numeral adjective which do not denote an exact number for example few some any several etc third is distributive numeral adjective which refers to each one of a number for example every person or either side or each animal so remember that adjectives of number are divided into three parts next you have the demonstrative adjectives which point out which person or thing is meant for example that man or those birds or such things remember that demonstrative adjectives answer the question which lastly we have the interrogative adjectives words such as what which whose when they are used with nouns to ask questions and they are interrogative adjectives example what manner of a person is he or which way did the thief run or Whose pencil is this? I must also mention about the emphasizing adjectives where the words own and very are used. For example, I saw him with my own eyes 
or she was cheated by her own friend or this is the very thing we all want the word what is sometimes used as an exclamatory adjective for example what bravery or what a game or what a blessing and now we shall deal with the formation of adjectives many adjectives are formed from nouns some from verbs and some from adjectives themselves adjectives formed from nouns are as follows girl girlish fool foolish gift gifted sense senseless and so on adjectives formed from verbs are as follows talk talkative move movable love lovable etc adjectives formed from adjectives are as follows red reddish sick sickly two twofold and so on once you have understood and learned to define these adjectives as i've said before all you need is practice pick up the grammar book and keep practicing the exercises at the end of the given chapter also try and create your own sentences the next subject we deal with in adjectives is the comparison of adjectives adjectives change in form to show comparison there are 3 degrees of comparison they are positive degree comparative degree and superlative degree the positive degree of an adjective is when it is in the simple form where it merely denotes a certain quality and no comparison is made for example this apple is sweet the comparative degree of an adjective denotes a higher degree of quality than the positive degree and it is used when two things are compared for example this apple is sweeter than that the superlative degree of an adjective denotes the highest degree of quality when more than two things are compared for example this apple is the sweetest of all there is another way by which we can compare things for example instead of saying rita is weaker than arthi in studies we can say rita is less weak than arthi in studies also the word most in the superlative degree is often used when there is no idea of comparison but merely indicating a quality of a very high degree for example this is most unfortunate or it was a most admirable effort this is known as absolute superlative now let us briefly learn about how comparative and superlative adjectives are formed most adjectives of one syllable form the comparative form by adding er that is er and become the superlative form by adding est est for example big bigger biggest or bold bolder boldest when the positive ends in e only r and st are added for example white whiter whitest or noble nobler noblest and when the positive adjective ends in y and is preceded by a consonant the y is changed into i before adding er and est to it for example heavy heavier heaviest or easy easier easiest and when a positive adjective is a word of one syllable it ends in a single consonant and is preceded by a short vowel that is a e i o u this consonant is doubled before adding er or est to it 
for example hot hotter where it has a double t hottest or sad sadder saddest and lastly adjectives of two or more than two syllables form the comparative by using the adverb more with the positive and the form the superlative by adding the adverb most with the positive for example beautiful more beautiful and most beautiful or courageous more courageous and most courageous before we conclude our study of adjectives you should know that besides the three degrees of comparison which are positive comparative and superlative there is also the adjective of irregular comparison wherein the comparative and superlative are not formed from the positive for example much more most or far farther farthest another example is good better best or bad worse worst all you do is hear this part of the cassette on adjectives at least 3 or 4 times till you thoroughly understand it and learn the definitions of each section then you open your grammar book and do the exercises at the end of the chapter the more you practice the easier it will be you may have to fill in the blanks or you may have to point out the adjectives in a sentence or even name the degree of comparison in the sentence it is interesting to note that with certain adjectives it is possible to change the degree of comparison in the sentence without changing the meaning of the sentence for example the superlative form madras is one of the biggest cities of india can be changed to the comparative form by saying madras is bigger than most other cities of india to cite another example the comparative form jaipur is hotter than delhi can be changed to the positive form by saying delhi is not as hot as jaipur interesting isn't it this is known as interchange of the degrees of comparison adjectives are also used as nouns for example the rich also have worries here rich denotes rich people or the cautious are the ones to gain here again cautious denotes cautious people these are plural nouns since they refer to a class of persons then there are the singular nouns which denote some abstract quality example he loves all that is beautiful the word beautiful is the noun with the abstract quality and some adjectives are derived from proper nouns such as indians canadians americans in denoting persons such as elders juniors soldiers criminals and so on and some adjectives denote things such as liquids solids valuables etc they are used in phrases too such as at present he does not have a job or in short i don't like what i'm doing or right or wrong he has won the case usually adjectives always precede a noun or they come before a noun but in some instances such as in poetry they are placed after the noun to make it sound dramatic for example friends dear the other commonly used adjectives are some any each every little a little the little few a few and the few etc i will drink some juice i will not drink any juice each year it gets better i have a bath every day the children showed little mercy to the poor animal 
I want a little kindness from my teacher. The little knowledge I have about cooking helps me. When I saw him a few years later, he had aged. The few stories she has written are quite good. And with that, we end our chapter on adjectives. Try making sentences yourselves. Use adjectives as frequently in a sentence. Now we move on to articles. The adjectives a, an, and the are called articles. They are demonstrative adjectives. Articles are definite or indefinite. A or an are indefinite articles and the is a definite article. To explain why this is so, a or an are indefinite articles because they do not specify the number of persons or things spoken of, whereas the is a definite article because it points out to a particular person or thing. Remember, the article a is used before a consonant. Example, a book, a lady, a school. And the article an is used before a word beginning with a vowel sound, such as a, e, i, o, u. Example, an apple, an orange, an ink pot, an umbrella. A definite article is used for a particular person or thing, such as the book, the man. For a noun that represents a whole class, such as the cat loves milk, or the lion is a strong animal. For names of rivers, oceans, gulfs, etc., such as the Shan, the Andaman Islands, the Alps. For common nouns, unique by themselves, such as the sun, the stars, with superlatives like the best story, the great Akbar. Before musical instruments like the flute, the tabla, the piano, these are just a few examples. As you go to higher classes, you will learn more in detail about them. What is a pronoun? A pronoun is a word used for a noun or a word used instead of a noun. For example, I am old. He is old. You are old. We are old. And they are old. I, she, it, we, you, they, he are known as personal pronouns. They are more finely defined under three other categories that is first person, second person and third person. They could be in singular form or plural form. In first person, singular pronouns will be I, me, my, mine and plural would be we, us, our and ours. In the second person, singular and plural pronouns will be you, your and yours. And in the third person, the singular pronouns will be he, she, his, her and him. And plural pronoun in both genders will be they, their, theirs and them. And in the neutral gender, they will be it and its. The other form of pronoun is the impersonal pronoun. It is an impersonal pronoun. The word it comes under the following categories. For things without life, such as book, gold, pencil, etc. For animals, such as dog, cat, cow. For a young child, or when we refer to some statement that went before. There are many other combinations which you will learn in senior classes. Well children, there's a lot more to go in grammar, but this cassette has come to an end. So you pick up the next cassette, that is cassette number 2 in grammar. 
I hope you enjoy yourselves.